Welcome back. The cars colliding and leaving people injured at Big Bend Community College is going to be fake. It's part of the annual Community Partnership Against Substance Abuse event on May 7th. The free public event features speakers discussing the warning signs related to common drugs, how drug-related crimes are investigated, and addiction impacts to families. The event runs from 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. at the Masco Conference Center on the college campus. A mock DUI collision is scheduled for 11.45 a.m. to show how emergency personnel respond to a crash scene. Observers learn the procedures emergency personnel use for an impaired driving collision and will be able to ask questions after the exercise. Other activities include the simulated impaired driving experience, allowing people to feel the simulated effects of impaired driving. DUI goggles are offered for some use during activities and exhibitors can answer questions. The event is hosted by Big Bend and the Central Basin Traffic Safety Task Force. For more information, contact Ryan Leonard at 509-793-2183. Students at Pioneer Elementary School are raising money for new playground equipment with their second annual fund run on Friday. The students will be walking or running laps with teachers or other adults, tracking how many laps they take and verifying them on pledge sheets. The money is placed in the school's spring fund to earn money for a new playground toy. For more information, contact Pioneer Elementary School Principal Nick Bergman at 509-787-1595. The history of farming in the Columbia Basin is explored by author Richard Shireman in his new book. Shireman is a Palouse native and the author of the book Harvest Heritage, Agricultural Origins and Heirloom Crops of the Pacific Northwest. He is inviting people to a presentation on a book about the transformation of the Columbia Basin into one of the world's most productive farmland regions. The free presentation and book signing is Thursday at 7 p.m at the Moses Lake Museum and Art Center. Scheuermann is sharing information on the original varieties of wheat, barley, and other crops brought to the Northwest during the frontier fur trade era. His presentation also discusses recent efforts to restore heirloom production. In Northwest news, six people are now linked together by three living kidney donors at a hospital in Oregon. Reporter Brian McMillan shows how the domino effect of giving started. It's the best thing I've ever done. These moments. I'm th very thankful. I am. I know you are. This friendship. It's, it's just amazing that somebody that I didn't know would be willing to do that. It all started at a wine party. Early last year, Ray Hennings was very sick. I, I couldn't even look at a set of stairs, let alone climb them. His kidneys were failing, and his close friends and family were not a donor match. You have to build up patience because, you know, you really can't do anything about it. Until one night changed everything. And I'd actually had dialysis that morning, and, you know, we were really, weren't sure we were going to go to the party. Ray was tired. He didn't feel well, but he and his wife, Lori, went to the party anyway. That's where they met Kendall McDonald, and the three of them started talking. All I needed to know was that, you know, they seemed like nice people, and he probably had this family that loved him. And if it was me, I'd be going crazy, so you should just do it. After testing, the two were a match. And early last year, Ray and Kendall went under the knife. The transplant was a success. And what happened next changed two other lives. In this situation, by one donor coming forward, we actually were able to do three transplants. Ray's wife, Lori, went through the process of trying to become a donor for Ray. That didn't work out. She wanted to pay it forward. I couldn't wait. And I was never scared. I couldn't wait to do it. She was able to donate her kidney to Wendy Brown, who was on dialysis for nine months. There are no words to really describe how, how grateful and blessed I feel that she was called to do this. Wendy's son Ryan then paid it for by giving his kidney to a young father. He just couldn't thank me enough. A chain reaction of giving that all started at a wine party. I love you. I love you too. <laughs> And that's going to do it for us here at I-501 News. We want to thank you for watching, and we'll see you again tomorrow.